and thank you for joining us right here on Plush Work. And today, known professionally as Honey Davenport, is an American drag performer, singer, activist of season 11 RuPaul's Drag Race. Help me welcome the one, the only, Honey Davenport. So your career is really doing good. It's actually been quite magical. It's like, you're like honestly the, been- You're like the Jennifer been, Hudson. Exactly, exactly, that's how I feel about it. So it's, it's been like, it, and, and the thing is, what we don't say about Jennifer Hudson is we don't attribute any of her, um, of her, of her success to American Idol. It's hers because yeah. it's really what she did with the platform, not what the platform did for her. Right. And that's, right. that's been my same experience since Drag Race. It's really like that platform opened me up to so many possibilities that unlike some girls who found a lot of major success since there, they got that off of, a tagline that the show gave them or a costume that they wore on the show. Right. Because right. I didn't because I didn't have those those things, I came off and I worked so hard to make sure that the whole world could see as much of me as as, as possible. And mm -hmm. that's been the thing that's given me my elevation. So in a way it's been like because of me that I am where I'm at, not uh -huh. because of drag race, which feels really good. You well, know good because that says a lot about your dedication, you and your hard work. Now did your I, I, did your singing, did your singing and recording and performances, your personal singing, because you are also a recording artist, did that also yeah. help? Did that help? I think so. Um, I've released a lot of music since my appearance on RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm -hmm. um, seven songs while I was in season, always video content to go along with them, uh, and three songs since. And tomorrow, I'm dropping another song. Um, so uh, called Digital Rainbow, which has the winner of season 11, Evie Adley, on it, as well as uh, American rapper Caswell and uh, Widow Von Du, who was on season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race, and my good friend from New York, Jace Vegas. Um, so, um, yeah, my music definitely has pulled me through. It definitely, wow. um, definitely, it's, it's the highlight of my career and what I'm up to, so it's definitely boosted me up in the ranks for sure. That's great. So now also a little birdie told me that you used to dance for Peppermint. That's right. That's crazy. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's crazy. So did you dance for Peppermint before uh, Davenport was even born? Before Honey Davenport was even born, uh -huh. uh, Peppermint really introduced me to the world of drag. She saw me back up dancing, at, not back up, she saw me just like get in my life dancing at a club. And mm -hmm. she was like, can you dance for me? And I was like, you're Peppermint. And this was going to be at like Lincoln Center. So I was like, uh, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I, I went to dance for her and um, we were years later, cause I, I started dancing for her and it became a thing and I did it for four years. And wow. years later we were going, we were going to London actually. And like she paid what she could, you know, mom would take care of us, but I definitely wanted some extra like spending coins for our London trip. Uh -huh. So I was like, maybe I'll do drag of my own. And that's literally, that's how it was all, how it all began really um, for me. So yeah, Peppermint is the reason, if anything, that I- I'm, Wow. And so, and Peppermint yeah. was very supportive, was supportive. Absolutely. And, that's great. Absol absolutely. You know, like um, I was raised by the Davenports, which is why I'm honey Davenport. Um, mm -hmm. But we all lived in the same neighborhood. Like Pet lived down the street and Sahara lived across the street and Vivacious lived down the street. Like this was like my community that I like, grew up as a baby queen in. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, yeah, the, she was super supportive. She was motherly even, you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Um, what was it like for you to be in that bubble where you couldn't do anything, you can't talk to anybody? And is that something you always wanted to do to be on Drag Race? I mean, being on Drag Race is something I always wanted. Like, you know, I started doing drag around its creation. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something that I that I really, really was uh, hoping it would be a part of my career at some uh -huh. point. Um, uh, 
it was strange when it happened to not be able to tell it, to say anything to anybody, uh -huh. to say the least, <laughs> that I had to like keep my mouth shut about that. Right, right. But we were talking right. about eight, the 18 titles that you won. And I'm going, oh, yes. how, how do you win 18 titles? Hard work is how you win 18 titles. And um, uh, I'll be having part of this uh, interview mask, but this is an Abraham Levy mask, by the way. I love he's that. A mask. He's a designer from New York City. One second, let me slip it on to be I conscious. Love Everybody mask. should be wearing masks. One second. Yeah. Hey, hey. That's the mask. Hey, <laughs> that's the mask you want to have. That's the mask you want to have. This is uh, my good friend, designer from New York, Abraham Levy. Is my sound so good? Oh, your sound is good. Good. So, okay, your yeah. sound is great. Yes, you're great. Okay. So now you're traveling. You're on your way to the new apartment, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Uh -huh. I'm on my way to what's hopefully going to be my new apartment. Okay, um, So my super at my building um, spazzed on me the other day and has become, like, really weirdly, like, it feels a little unsafe. So... Oh wow! In the in the hours that I was should have been planning for this interview, I've actually been apartment searching, and I got the chance to go see an apartment right now. So I'm having this interview on the way. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Hey, that's the good thing about being virtual and what we can do uh, online too. Um, let's talk about this incredible event that you're going to be hosting. Um, yes. And the reason why the, Jason is putting on this event. Uh, tell us a little bit about this event and why it's important to you. I mean, first off, Get Out Magazine has been important to me for the entirety of my career. I used to mm -hmm. write for Get Out Magazine in New York. Mm -hmm. um, I used that platform to expose a bunch of artists who were um, underexposed, especially people of color mm -hmm. in the New York City nightlife scene. And um, n now that I am more on that it's really good to come back to get out in any capacity and i had just started talking to mike todd the owner of get out about me coming back and writing a column which i'm restarting my column back up mm -hmm. and uh he he then told me about this event uh you know this incredible event and asked if i would host it just like i did for old time's sake mm -hmm. and i used to host all of the get out awards and the get out wow. holiday shows and so like it to me, it's it's important for so many reasons. It's like I'm helping my family raise money for really important causes. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is a, that's amazing. You've done a lot. If you've done all of that, you've really been working your butt off. Uh, you know, yeah, there's yeah. a reason why there's a reason why going home early from Drag Race didn't affect my career because I had already created my my lane. I it was already a New York City. I was raised by New York City nightlife legends mm -hmm. so i had uh, i was already in a route towards that you know right. and um i think that that's the, the 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 really cool thing they say hard work pays off but you don't know when that's gonna happen but it always does it just always does right right um let's talk about the purpose of this this event is for uh homeless lgbt youth and let's talk about i want people to know how this happens in the community because they call them throwaway kids, because kids are rejected from their families of all creed, mom, dad, aunt, everyone, and they're put out in the streets and they're rejected. Uh, let's talk yeah. about that because people need to know when they see things like pose or they hear about balls or they hear about drag, that this is not just people doing something because they wanna be weird or whatever, but this is about a community, a family right. and being accepted being, um, finding your place in life, finding yourself. I want to talk about that because really that's the whole purpose. Right. Of why this event is being put on. Yeah. Um, you see, I, we still live in a world, even though we have some rights that are being afforded to us, mm -hmm. we still live in a world where it's the homosexuality because it's been instilled in so many cultures as a bad, Thing that mm -hmm. it's still a hardship for some families to get through mm -hmm. and some people to get over, even though it's completely normal and a complete part of the human experience. Mm -hmm. um, and and for those reasons, like we definitely still have a lot of youth in this country and around the world who have been put out of their families and put out of their homes because of their sexual um, preferences, which mm -hmm. 
are given to them from birth. You know, and, and I believe that wholeheartedly as I am a gay man who knows I didn't choose to be a gay man, <laughs> you know, um, and uh, uh, although I'm very happy of the fact that I am um, and I, I, I've experienced homelessness, but not because my family put me out. Mm -hmm. It is it is the worst experience ever. And if there's any one little thing I could ever do to stop somebody else from experiencing that, I'm willing to give my all, you know. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, did you did you see the did you see Pose? Did you like it? Oh my gosh, Pose is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you think it depicted the true essence of what that life is about? What that lifestyle so, is about? So I've only ever gotten glimpses into that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, even though I was raised in urban communities and I've frequented some balls, I never was involved in the, the scene. Mm -hmm. um, and I had tons of friends who were, and I definitely growing up frequent them, and I I've appreciated Vogue and ballroom culture so hardly. Um, it's, in my time in New York, especially when I first moved to New York, I was all about it. Um, but my career has really gone in a different direction, and I, I haven't had very many interactions with the ballroom scene. Mm -hmm. uh, especially Pulse takes place in the 80s, where I wasn't even there at all. So I can't really give place on its validity. However, I will say that it is just interesting to see stories from that perspective be told and being normalized on main screen and TV because when people can see those kind of stories, they identify that with them. And whether it's completely uh, accurate or truthful or not, it's important. And I'm like really honored to live in a time where I'm, I'm seeing it happen. Mm, that's great. Uh, before we go, I definitely have to touch on this. We see a lot that's going on out with um, uh, the marches, mm -hmm. uh, racism, um, mm -hmm. the White House. Let's talk about that in the LGBTQ community. Is there a divide and a separation there? Is it getting better or is it stagnant? Because we know that there's got to be some. I hear, I just saw something posted by... Um, I think a drag queen. I think I thought thought she was from Philly. Uh, who yeah. posted something on Facebook the other day about white venues not supporting African American drag queens. So yeah. What what is that about? Um, you know, when it comes to anything that is American, there, there's racism in our soil. Mm -hmm. It's what this country grew out of. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and it's in, it's inevitably in every single aspect of our lives because it's what this country was birthed from. And so, yeah, it is a part of our queer nightlife scene. And it's, it's disheartening because to see one minority mistreat another minority is ridiculous. But there is a issue of, um, of, um, of not being of of not being as inclusive as we should be, mm -hmm. and not having diverse cast um, in nightlife, and it's something that I've called out a lot in my career, mm -hmm. um, and it's something that I stand up against all the time. Even in my art, mm -hmm. I try to use um, even in songs like "Draw the Blood" and "Made Like You," and even "The Hive," and "Around and Filter." They all have themes of. Um, of social justice in them because I'm trying to normalize the world that I want to see, you know, um, and yeah. trying to not make us fighting for a right to fight and more like, a, yeah, y'all should have those. <laughs> like, right, right. because we should have those, right, you know, right. um, um, and it's so real, the amount of racism that is in the queer community mm -hmm. and the lack of inclusion for people of color is insane. But, I think that right now, more than ever, we are finally on the precipice of change. Mm -hmm. Like, we've actually started to discuss these things that are issues in a way that we never have before. And and for that, as somebody who's create, been creating social justice art their entire career, their entire life, I feel heard in a way that I've never felt before. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm starting to feel like there could possibly be change here. Maybe one day within my lifetime, people like me will be treated fairly. Wow. I hope great. that's what that's great. Yeah. Which takes us to Black Girls Rock because it seems that Black Girls Rock is sort of a opening where 
you're not waiting on anyone else to open the door or do anything for you. You're able to come together and do it for yourself. Let's talk about Black yeah. Rock because that was a, a pretty phenomenal event so, that you were a part of. Yeah. I, magic. But, uh, yeah, it is. So the Vixen, who's also from RuPaul's Drag Race, uh -huh. started Black Girl Magic in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And it's a monthly event. She brings in a cast of phenomenal performers now at this point. It's a highlight of Chicago nightlife. And I got the I got the chance to co-produce the event with her in New York, which was phenomenal. And we had a huge cast, one of the biggest ever. Um, and it, it was it, it it's really like a family reunion for drag queens because you know when I'm in a dressing room and all of my counterparts are white because I'm the one tokenized member of the mm -hmm. cast. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's and that's been my whole twelve years of a career. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was it was there was some comfort in doing at least a show with like people, you know, who had a similar experience to me. And I I hope that we can get to a world where it's not a necessity, where all of our experiences are so similar and not based upon our race mm -hmm. that we don't need to separate and segregate in that way. But right but now, unfortunately, with the lack of diversity in nightlife and the, the lack of inclusion and, in, you know, a receiving gigs, it's, it's our only thing we can do. So while it is something I celebrate, I, I, I feel like I, I just can't wait to see the day that it's not like a detriment to our survival. Right. You know, like, Right, right, right. When you do these events like Black Girl Magic, are the white drag queens supporting it? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and and yeah, that's that absolutely. Our for the most part, our sisters have been speaking up and speaking out and showing up and showing out for us. I know when yeah. I produced when I produced the event when I co-produced it with the Vixen in uh, New York, uh, I was flabbergasted at how many people came and supported and were there for us. It's, you know, Black Girl Magic is not just an event that celebrates Black people on stage. It's for, for, for Black people on stage. Also, it showcases our talent to the a world of other people, you know, because those stories and those, those pieces, those numbers, those aren't being afforded to any audience because of the lack of diversity. The only place they can get girl magic. And that's that's pretty powerful. Wow, that's great. Well, what, what we got to, before we leave, last question, we gotta talk about your music. Mm -hmm. What singles do you have out? Where okay. People purchase these singles, videos, and how serious is this gonna be? Are, are you gonna make it to the dance charts? Is this something that you're taking very serious that we'll see you um, maybe standing next to Beyonce or who knows, you know, because you're, you def know, you're definitely very talented. Thank you. No, if, you if you never did drag ways, if you never did drag, you could definitely be an artist. You could stand on your own. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I, I feel that way. I hope that that's the case. Mm -hmm. I definitely think of myself as a recording artist who does drag, uh -huh. not a drag queen who makes music. Not mm -hmm. that there's any problem with that at all, but I definitely am in the the prior version of that first. Mm -hmm. um, my music, like I said, is the center and the highlight of everything that I do. Mm -hmm. It's my main focus and my main goal it, with all of my drag is to share it. Um, my last single, Draw the Blood, was with Aja from RuPaul's Drag Race, mm -hmm. and it's one of the most important pieces of music I've ever written. It, 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 it told a story, the video, which I also directed, told a story about police brutality that I personally experienced right before the world exploded with us observing it and with a closer eye. Um, I, I, I hope to continue to make music that not just, that's not just something that you can dance to or relax to, but something that is actual art, like what you said. I, I like to make music that's art. I think that art makes you think um, and it makes you take a closer look at life. So mm -hmm. I try to make art that is a mirror to life. So I can say, listen, this is what we're dealing with. Look at yourself in this situation and see how, you know, how we could better it or celebrate it in, in any kind of way. So I hope to continually do those things. And if that lands me in a place that I'm charting mm -hmm. and next to Beyonce or next to whoever, 
I, I, I accept that. I want it. I, I appreciate it. But as long as I have the opportunity to continually create and live a life that is comfortable, I'm happy. So what, what, whatever, whatever comes, I'm willing, but I am still happy to just have the opportunity to share my voice and to share my talent on the platform that I have already. That is amazing. Where can everybody follow you and follow your success on social media? You can follow me on Instagram and on YouTube at Honey Davenport Official. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter and drag to fans at Honey underscore Davenport. And you can get my music on every single platform that is available. iTunes, Tidal, SoundCloud, whatever, you name it. I'm on all of them. And you should especially look out for my new single that is just coming out for Tide called Digital Rainbow. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So I'm really excited about that. That's great. It was such a delight to talk to you. And Same. To, to, to have you express, you're very young, but you're very intelligent. Um, there's a lot going on in that brain. You can tell. Thank you. And, uh, um, and you come from Philly. There's a backstory behind you. That's a whole nother interview. Uh, Let's do it. I'm always you know, down. I'm always. You, know, um, um, you have a great story, but you have a great, great career and a lot of stuff ahead of you. So it was a delight to talk to you today. And much, Thank you. much success to you. And I'm going to be watching you, you tomorrow. So I know you're going you. to kill it. Thank you, you so it. much. All right, well, thank you, and we'll talk to you soon, okay? Talk to you soon. All right, thanks, everybody, for joining us right here with the one and only Honey Davenport. We'll see you next time.